All right. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning or good evening, everyone. It's Kate Richberg, and it's that time. It's Wednesday, March 31st, the last day of March for 2021. So hello if you're watching us live right at this time, this broadcast, this live broadcast, and hello if you're watching this on the replay. It's great to have all of you all here. So bear with me here while I get my face on camera as well as my voice. So here we are. There we are. Um, it's great to have everybody here. Uh, just a program note, Janice is uh, has an appointment this morning during this time, so she won't be moderating on YouTube, but we have our wonderful Gita who is running around moderating on all channels. So uh, it's great to have all you all here. Uh, and Janice will jump in later if she can. I don't know if she'll be done or whatever her story is. So, um, but we're all happy, we're all well, we're all doing fine here. So I uh, wanted to start off by saying this project, if you're new to watching this, and I know we always have brand new people watching um, every uh, uh, broadcast practically, um, I wanted to put up on the screen that, of course, you can find us on all of our social media. You can find us at beadshop.com on our uh, Instagram, uh, The Bead Table, our bead shop group on Facebook. And of course, if you're watching right now on YouTube, take a moment to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, it means a, a lot to us to have you guys follow us there so that everybody who loves to um, uh, watch bead videos and stuff can find us. So the more you engage with us, uh, the more other people find us. So it's great to have you all here. And of course, and I'll put this on at the end as well, but all of the information on the project and the products that I'm gonna be using today, you can find right on our website at beadshop.com. And sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. Some of you this past weekend, I made, I, I don't know, I got a little, I got a little whimsy in my head and I uh, this past weekend made a little uh, giveaway with purchase mix and I know a bunch of you grabbed it uh, which is great so I'm glad you guys loved it and it was called spring path so uh, it was fun to do it so um, if you guys got it I've made all of the little uh, tubes and they'll be going out in your orders this week as we fill them. So thank you so much for all of those orders. So make sure you guys, the um, newsletter is the best way to keep in touch with all of us because you never know what I'm going to be coming up with. Um, and so uh, that being said, I wanted to also mention in uh, April, we're doing a couple of fun things. I'm going to be taking, I, I want to make sure I get these dates right. So let me pull up my calendar here so I can look at them. Um, we are having uh, Emily this Friday on the 2nd. Uh, Emily will be here for part two of our um, fringe uh, class, our Seed Bead School fringe with Emily. We'll be wrapping it up this Friday, which is going to be really fun to see all of her things that she's pulling out to share with us about fringe and then next friday we're going to have a real special guest i'm not going to tell you who it is it's no one who's been on the show before it's great and um we're having a trunk show that starts that day with this special guest so you're going to make sure and watch the um the newsletter uh, for more of that and I'll have more information uh, next Wednesday on uh, the live broadcast or the following uh, Wednesday the 7th I guess it is and then uh, I'm going to be off for a few weeks um, from free tip Fridays in April I'm actually uh, going to be off the 16th the 23rd and the 30th but we'll be coming at you on Wednesdays but we're going to take a little brief um, hiatus from Free Tip Friday for the rest of April. Uh, we've got a lot to do here and stuff. So we're uh, trying to play a little bit of catch up. So a little bit of spring cleaning and stuff. So Free Tip Fridays after the ninth are going to go on vacation um, for the month of April. So and there'll be more information about that. Where? In the newsletter. 
right? So the first fringe, Coral is asking when was the first fringe class? Um, that was the uh, Facebook uh, live that or the bead shop live that I did a week ago today. So we made these really beautiful and I should have brought the, the sample but um, these really beautiful um, lantern um, kind of Emily calls them lantern um, brick stitch pieces that I am now incorporating into a lariat. So the date of that was let me go back to the calendar here because again uh, was the 24th. So if you look on our YouTube channel, uh, you'll find it there. Of course, if you go to the project, the Lantern Lariat on beadshop.com, uh, you'll see the video embedded there as well. So it's really, um, I think, uh, a great, Emily is such a great tutorial or <laughs> tutorial uh, teacher, uh, and it was really fun to watch her do that brick stitch. But this Friday, she's gonna she's delved into all of her um, uh, archive, I guess, of seed bead product projects. So there's going to be a lot. It's going to be a really fun Friday with Emily. So uh, there's that story there. So uh, let me uh, jump in and start with this project. Um, this project, the impetus for this project um, were these Swarovski crystal squares. I can see you, right? There, there it is. I could. I'm looking at you through that square. Um, this is a bead, and I'll I'll move the camera so you guys can see it. But um, this, whoops, slippery little devils there. There we go. Uh, I've loved this bead forever. Uh, it has so many possibilities, but I think that it also stymies people sometimes, right? They're like, how do I use this? So let's take a look um, at what I've got in front of me here on uh, my bead table. And you can see here's the squares and the size, have I lost every, um, I think you guys, I've lost every measuring device that I have has walked out of this room. <laughs> I should, um, you know what? It's on the website. Let me just run. Or Gita, if you're looking at it, uh, you could actually tell me the correct dimensions. Because <laughs> every single measuring tape, I think, is out in the other room. What a surprise for me. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look. If we go to beadshop.com, what a surprise. Um, and uh, let me just look real quick and see if I can find it here. Uh, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Hang on a second. You know how you get something in your mind and you're like, I am going to find it. There it is. So the, the item number on this one, it's the Swarovski 4439. Um, and it's the crystal square ring um, for this one. And I actually, it doesn't have the dimensions on here. I'll grab a tape measure so you can see it. Oh, there it is. 14 millimeter. Thank you. Everybody just jumped in with the 14 millimeter. Thank you so much. So the 14 millimeter um, square, I've used it before like this. I've used it in a ring. You can peyote stitch this ring. This is the uh, crystal copper color that I like so much. I've also taught a class in this at different bead shows where I have made the um, the ring band out of metal and we've riveted it um and it was really fun so it was it was good um it, it's such a great uh, a great piece so when i found these um this kind of pile here um that we added to stock uh for you guys we have them in two colors we have them in the crystal red magma which is a beautiful Swarovski color and then we have them in this crystal copper so i chose the crystal copper no surprise there and I based it also, you guys might remember, 
Um, these earrings I did, we called them the Joan earring because they were had a little bit of a rocker vibe to them, right? Um, yeah, Kia says she's screaming it out there. It's 14 millimeter. It's 14 millimeter. Well, I couldn't hear you across the miles, but thank you so much for typing it in, Gita. Thank you. <clears throat> so I made these when Emily did her ring, um, her ring project, which was the odd count peyote. That odd count peyote was great for so many things, including that ring. Um, as well as uh, I did those earrings. And I think I did those earrings on, I think it was on a free tip Friday. I think I did them then, um, but it was really kind of a fun um, project to create for sure. So um, if you want to do that earring, you can go back to that Friday. Um, and I'm sure Gita's on it, but if you look at it, you can also find the project over on Bead Shop as well. Um, but the, doing the odd count peyote was kind of a, what do I want to say, a real game changer for me, the way that Emily shared it. Um, here's the rings right here, the odd count peyote rings. And what's cool about the odd count peyote, if you see this with the Delicas, there's five rows, one, two, three, four, five. So that allows you to have a center line in your peyote stitch right there. And she did the same thing here, Emily did with her rings. You can see two, four, five, six, seven. So there are two rows of peyote here and here, and then a three row of peyote in the center. So what I did <clears throat> when, and I don't have it here, I think it's sitting on my desk, when I started to create the um, the idea for this piece, I started to play around with how many of the seed beads am I going to need to go across um, these rings. So I'm going to move everything to this. Let me pull this up a little bit here. And... <clears throat> Hmm. Pardon me, let me get all that there and I'm going to move that and put this here. So I've got a clean surface for you guys to look at. So, um, so I did a little strip of peyote uh, stitch with um, six across because I thought, you know what, I'm going to do an even count peyote because it's easier right? It's easier and faster to do. So I did six, but six just didn't work. So this is actually, <clears throat> pardon me, four beads across. It's actually two and two. So you'll see when I start this. Now Donna is asking, and it's a good question. Um, she says, if you can't do peyote stitch, is there another way to connect the squares together? Uh, seriously, Donna, the way I'm going to show this for you today, this could not be easier. It's almost not a peyote stitch because it's just a two and two pattern. So it's super easy. So I urge you to give it a try. You don't have to try it on these materials. You can just try it on a, um, a practice piece. So um, it's not going to be that difficult um, for you. But you could also <clears throat> wire wrap these together. Uh, let me see if I have, usually I have kind of a bead or something hanging out here. I cleaned my table, which I should never do because immediately after cleaning my table, I need something. But, you know, you could wire wrap, like have a bead in the center and then wire wrap it around here. And then, or you could do something like this. This is our circle back chain. And you could link these in like this, that's a little wide, but you get my idea, right? However you want to connect these. I chose peyote stitch because I wanted a little bit of, um, um, a little bit of beads in there. Um, someone also just, uh, Kim just said maybe ladder stitch. <clears throat> ladder stitch I think would also work nicely. My go-to for beads for seed beading is um, peyote stitch. So that's kind of super easy and I don't have to think about it. So that's how I used it. But you could, you could ladder stitch, you could do whatever kind of 
especially if you're a much more accomplished seed beater than I am, you can do anything to connect those two together. So, but chain would look good. Again, wire wrapping would look good. So, you know, this is just your springboard, just your jumping off point. So some of you saw, and I didn't know that Drea was going to put it in the newsletter, or I would have drawn it a little bit better. I think I have it. Uh, I have it here. <clears throat> I drew out a little, uh, I think it's here, uh, a little um, drawing for Drea, because she goes, what is your piece going to look like? Because, you know, of course, I planned it so far in advance. I did actually plan it far in advance, but I just didn't have time to finish it. So I said this. This is a photo from uh, the newsletter. So I would have made the drawing on the right look actually a little bit better had I known it was going to be shown to everybody, but it's okay. So you can see here, I've got the chain. I've got a lobster claw. Yes, that's a lobster claw clasp right there. And then here are all of my peyote, my squares, my Swarovski squares, and then the peyote links them together. Okay, so that's kind of how I arranged this piece. So, <clears throat> and you could also do, Michelle was saying, you could do um, uh, macrame in between. That would look great. Um, Lynn is saying maybe a leather infinity, like we do that, you know, that leather I've got I've got a piece of leather here um here and then here's Michelle's macrame would work if you like that look as well so um you could do that you know how we how we do this with the the leather cord and you could do we call that the trails end technique because Janice used it in her Trails End project, right? But you could also, instead of um, silk wrapping this, you could wire wrap it. You might want to make it a little closer. I don't know, something like that. But anyway, um, here they might sit a little bit differently because that leather is thinner. So these might sit as diamonds rather than squares. So it would all, you know, again, this is a great um, bouncing off point for you guys to kind of play around. But yeah, you could also do flat leather with crimps. There's so many ways to um, to connect these two. So, but essentially what I'm using is this is, let me raise the camera up a little bit so you've got a little better view here. This is our wrapped link chain and I grabbed a foot of it. I want this necklace to sit kind of close to the neck. That's why it's a little shorter. If you want it to be a little bit longer, you can either peyote stitch more of the cubes I'm going to do three, six, seven of these. Um, or you could get, so you could do more of these, or you could do more chain, or you could do longer strips in between. Okay, so it's really very customizable. Okay, so <clears throat> the way I'm going to connect these, I've got some other things here. This is that same hammered hoop like I used in that earring, and the earring is here. Right, again, that's with the odd count peyote, but I'm using even, and I'm using 11 knots here, and those are delicas. So you can see how um, the look, even though these are size 11 delicas, the look is a little different because the delica is a little more of a flat bead. You can see that. And then these guys, of course, are a little more round. You can see that there. Okay, so this wrap chain if I were coming around, let's make this the top of the necklace here. And I will put, <clears throat> I'm going to attach this uh, piece right here, this link. And I think I'm going to attach it using this hammered oval right here. The cool thing about this wrapped link chain, and then we'll get into the peyote stitch, but I want to show you how this will go together. I love this chain. Um, I feel like this chain doesn't get as much play as it should. Uh, I just love it. And the cool thing about this chain, and I'll show you, is that it is actually links. So see that there? They just open like that. There's like It's just like jump rings connected to one another. And so you can try it out. It's a little um, small. The hole in this piece is a little bit small for that chain. 
if I were just connecting this chain to this lobster claw clasp, I would just connect it there. But what I need instead is a jump ring in between. So I'm going to close this up. And I'm going to grab, this is that six millimeter jump ring. I'll open it up. And I will attach the piece there, just like that. OK, and you can see how that attaches. OK, so then I'm going to attach my clasp. Because I like these big clasps, and I like them to show if I'm going to use them. I try and incorporate them into the design of the piece. If you don't love a giant lobster claw like this, then choose a lobster claw that's smaller. We've got a swivel lobster clasp that we have one that's we call the small swivel, and then we just have the regular swivel. So that works. Two, if you don't like this big kind of big hardware look, um, but I happen to like it. I like the way that looks there. So next, I'm going to will um, we're going to clip this clasp into this one. I'm going to see how that looks. So let me uh, open this up. This is how this opens, and then this will just connect just like that. And since this rotates around, um, you know, it doesn't really matter how how it hangs. It'll rotate with the necklace. And then what I can do, actually, I think I have that backwards. You know what? I do because I'm going to peyote stitch onto this side. Sorry, sorry. I'm still, can you tell I'm still working out this design in my head? No surprise to any of you, right? I'm actually going to repeat. That's why I had two of these. I'm going to repeat that oval link. But you can see this could also just connect right into there. That's obviously one of the ideas that I had for it. So that's what came forward in my brain. So here's this. And I will connect it with another ring. And this is all in antique brass, which I use, but you can use whatever metal finish floats your boat, whatever you like. You could even mix up your metals in this. Instead of having these hammered pieces here be the brass, you could have it be um, the copper, and it would kind of flow with that copper um, square that we have here. So this opens up, and then this slides on like that. And you could even go a little bit larger with this jump ring if you wanted to, but that fits on there fine. Then, <clears throat> whoops, I have this backwards again. I see how I want to do that ring through here. I need to peyote stitch through this long portion of the ring. So sorry, let me flip this around. It actually goes this way. But you can see all of these different configurations. You can, like I like to say, choose your own adventure with this necklace. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Because now I'll peyote stitch these guys together. Right? You with me there? Then <clears throat> this guy connects with this small jump ring. There we go. I think I finally... I think I finally got this design right. There we go. This goes on. And this. Again, if you don't want this to kind of be at the side over here, you could put this in the back. But again, it has kind of a, um, as Coral is saying here, kind of that industrial chic. I like that. Um, it has that look to it. So that's why I like having that over here. And you know, when I design, I like to see um, I like to see how it lays out. And I like things that are asymmetrical. I don't like symmetry all the time. I think um, sometimes mixing it up a little bit makes it look 
I don't know, makes it look unusual and kind of interesting. So that's what we've got. Now, <clears throat> I had my piece. Oh, here we go. Shoo. I've got it here. And we're going to, let's talk peyote stitch, okay? Because I know that some of you don't seed bead, right? And, or don't do any, maybe do a little bit of seed bead work or whatever. I'm going to put that chain right there to the side. I'm going to put these in here just to neaten up my space so we're not going all over the place with it. There we go. And, um, but this peyote stitch that I'm going to show you today is like I said, almost not even peyote stitch. It's so easy. Now I chose kind of this mustard and brown colors because I thought it worked well with the crystal copper. Um, this is the matte opaque chocolate, I believe, and this is the frosted opaque glazed rainbow pistachio, all both in size 11s, and you need 11 aughts for these, or you need to go down smaller than 11 aughts. 8 aughts won't work with this because um, the crystal, the interior diameter of the crystal is too small for 8 aughts, so you've got to do 11s for this. So we're, I'm going to put this little strip aside, and I'm going to show you how I start it. Really easy. Right, and again, thank you, Gita, for doing all of this linking. Uh, Janice has a meeting this morning, so uh, one that we felt she couldn't miss, so uh, it was only given at this time, so she's doing that. So Gita is bouncing all over our broadcasts and doing some linking, so I really appreciate you, Gita, and everybody else with your patience. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> here is... Here are my two colors. And I tried it out in different like stripes and stuff, but I thought that the easiest on the eyes was a center strip of color flanked by one single band of color on both sides. Okay, so uh, so that's the, the design we're going with. So now remember, I'm gonna try and get real close in here so you guys can see. Remember that in Peyote Stitch, you guys, the first row that you put in is actually the first two rows okay so if you haven't done peyote stitch before just hang with me on this and the light bulb moment will happen for you just sit back relax i see some of you are having coffee and cookies which i love that story so <laughs> sit back relax enjoy your coffee and cookies and just kind of let this um wash over you okay so <clears throat> again my first row of beads these are actually the first two rows that i've put on and i'm putting it on in pattern a brown two of the yellow and a brown okay and i slide it all on i'm not putting a stopper bead on the end some of you do but i'm not going to today i'm just going to hold these in my hand because they're pretty easy to control let me lift the camera a little bit i'm a little close <clears throat> this tail is maybe i don't know three inches or so right here so uh, I'll be able to come back in and weave that in. So now with our first bead that we put on, we're going to put on a bead. It's going to be this brown one. And I'm going to, so I put on a bead. The mantra is that we got from Emily. We put on a bead or we, uh, we put on a bead, we skip a bead and we go through the next bead. Okay. So I've done that. I put on this bead. I'm skipping that first bead in the row, and then I'm going through the next bead. So, and I want to tighten it up, this tension. And can you see how I've got like a little pico right here, right? You can see that. And then I'm going to put on a bead, and it's going to be a yellow bead. And the way that you put these for this four beaded row, or it's actually now two beads, you put a brown one first, followed by a mustard colored one, and that's it, right? So I put on a bead, I skip a bead, which is this yellow one, and I go through a bead. All right, the row is done. It's a two bead row. So when I tighten it up, can you see how the beads that I've put on have displaced the beads below them? And they actually now have three rows. And the way we count those rows here, 
is I'm going to count the brown beads on the outside of the peyote stitch. And I'll count them on both sides. So if this is one, two, three, that means I've got three rows. And in the little band that I've made for my stitching, for my um, tension, I have made 29 rows. Okay? So three out of the 29, 26 left to go. So now we're just going to come in. I'm going to pick out my bead. So you can see here how there's little spaces where the next beads go. So here I'm going to pick up a bead. It's going to be brown. I'm going to skip this bead that's below it and go through this bead here. Okay? And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to pick up a bead. Now it's the yellow. Skip a bead, which is the bead below it, and go through a bead, which is the last bead in the row. And that's it. Now, the first few rows are a little funky with the tension. And I kind of do this throughout when I'm making this piece. I hold this kind of in between my thumb and index finger. And I pull on that first bead as well as the, the thread. And then I pull it back in. And that, see how that kind of writes your tension right there. And again, it looks a little bit like a crooked path. Then I flip the work, right? Because I'm always beating from the right, my right hand to the left. I know some people, when the peyote stitch, peyote stitch backwards from right to left and left to right, but I'm not that talented. So I put on a bead, I skip a bead, I go through a bead. And tighten and see how your, your tension gets funny because it's such a, a, whoops, it's such a, get back into the camera frame there. It's such a skinny little strip of peyote stitch so that when I put on this first bead, see how it pulls the thread here. So I don't worry about that too much because I'll tighten it all up at the end. So I pick up a bead, I skip this bead, and I go through the last bead in the row. Then again, I pinch that work together between my index finger and my thumb, and I give it a pull. And then see if this last bead, and you can see it, how even when I pull it, because again, this is such a short little strip, see how there's space there? So I do this, I grab it, and then I pull it to tighten, and then I pull it here. And that kind of, and you'll see me as I speed up and do this in, in Kate speed, how it, um, how it almost becomes automatic for me. So put on a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. That's the brown one. And here's the yellow one. Put on a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And I will tighten it. <clears throat> I pull on that first bead pull the thread through, and flip it kind of all at the same time, okay? I love how everybody is um, having Easter candy. That's funny. My mom says she's eating her Easter candy as we speak, sees candy eggs, a tradition in our household. And yes, she is correct. I was not much of a candy eater as a child. I'm still not, not much of a candy eater. Um, Though I do, I do like it. I like hard candies, like, you know, sour candies and hard candies. Those are my favorite. Um, but she would always get my my candy, my Easter candy, because it would sit. You know, Gran would be, you know, Gran was always super generous with all the candy in our Easter baskets. And my Easter basket would just sit there. Same thing with my Halloween candy, right? It would just sit there and my mom would be like, all right, th that's enough. <laughs> my granddad had a sweet tooth too. My granddad loved, he liked coconut candies, candies that had coconut. He loved coconut. So, but I was never one of those kids that, you know, had to have candy. Now, if we're talking something crunchy like a chip, sign me up. So you can see here, I'm just moving along, <clears throat> moving along. And then we'll take a look. I'm going to count the rows again for you because it'll be a little bit easier for you to count these rows. 
Okay, I'm going to lay it down there. I'm going to get a little closer so you guys can see. Okay. And I'm going to, this is where I would start my stitching from this side, because that's where my thread comes out. <clears throat> so I'm going to count just like Emily taught us how to do to count these rows. We count the last bead in each row because each of these rows that you do, you kind of make a hat, you know, the you go forward one row and back one row. So you've got to count both of these sides. So there's one, I'll count them on this side first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're at ten rows already. Okay. <clears throat> so let me Lynn is saying that seed beating is for patient people. It's true. I bet you qualify, Lynn. You make all kinds of beautiful pieces. But it is true. You know, we have to give ourselves permission to be patient with ourselves for so many reasons. And I'll tell you, I'll be very honest. I uh I have found <laughs> as I get older, um, I used to be like really patient, right? Um, my mom can tell you, I was always pretty patient. And now as I get older and older, I feel like I'm less patient with myself. So I have to slow down a little bit and tell myself, all right, just relax, right? It's not the end of the world. I think when it comes to learning new processes and new projects, um, I have to actively tell myself, give myself permission to just practice. So that's why if you're going to attempt this little skinny bit of peyote stitch here, <clears throat> do it without any, um, without any outcome in mind, right? Just grab two colors of beads and you could also try it in the eight dots, right? Especially if you're not going to put it on your crystal, you're just doing a little practice run, right? Um, and practice it in eight dots, and then go down to your 11 knot beads. Okay. Um, when I'm teaching metals, when I'm teaching my metal smithing classes, especially in my beginning class, I teach on little samplers, right? So that we're not worried about um, messing up on our piece. And it's also the way I teach in my book, Simple Soldering. We work on samplers, so you perfect your technique. Same thing with beading or wire wrapping or working with leather or gluing. I urge you to give yourself just a little practice piece. Like I always say, you don't send the baseball pitcher out on the mound cold, right? You put him in the bullpen first. Same thing here, right? When you're beading or working on something. Give yourself a little warm-up exercise, especially if you haven't done it in a while, and then your hands will start to remember <clears throat> what's going on, right? You'll you'll kind of know. Um, and so uh, <laughs> I love this. Michelle says, as I get older, I call it putting, uh, my putting up with BS button is broken. And I agree. <laughs> I love that. My Canadian sister, we are Canadian, we are sisters in many ways. Um, but that is true. So um, just remember you're picking up a brown one first and then a mustard one. And then, and you can see how my hands just automatically kind of do the thing, right? So you build that muscle memory as you're doing this. So I'm going to do two more rows, then I'm going to put it aside. And then we're going to go to connecting and see how, <clears throat> um, how I've come in here. I haven't even completely pulled my thread through before I put on my second one here. And that also makes me a little speedier, right? I don't pull my thread all the way through. So let me just put on a couple more at Kate's speed. One, and it looks like Janice has joined the chat, which is great. So welcome to JP. We'll put this on. We'll go through. I tighten, I pull that first, I pull that, come on, I pull that first bead, pull it back, and flip it. So we go through a brown, then a mustard, through the brown, 
tighten, pull the first bead to tighten, pull the thread and flip. All right, so what do we have? And this is also the way if you wanted to make a, a, a peri stitch ring or something like that, you'd do the same thing. Oh, and thank you, Gita, for um, mentioning this. I am using KO thread and a size 10 beading needle. What I'm doing using is a sharp and those of you who've watched me do this before know I like sharps because they're short. Um, I've had a lot of experience, uh, a lot of needlework experience. So I like a short needle because I can control it a little bit better, I think, than the long beading needles. But if you like a longer size 10 needle, do it, right? Whatever works for you. And any skinny thread, if you want to do this in Fireline, you could. You could do this in Hana. I happen to be using KO. So whatever works. And this is the brown KO here for this. Okay, so let's count our rows, right? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Only nine more rows to go to on this. So I'll come back to this. Okay, so here I have, let's count these rows, and we know what the top and the bottom is, or the where I began, because I have got this short thread down here. So I'm going to count, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So I need 29 rows. So let me <clears throat> grab my needle. And you could make them a little bit longer if you wanted. I actually made one that was, I don't know, like 35 rows maybe or 37 rows. And it looked a little like droopy here. Right, so you can make this strip a little longer if you want it to be. And you could also, you don't have to use these crystal cubes, right? You could do these too, or you could mix up these loops on the inside. These are our large hammered rings, so you could do that. You know, how wh whatever you want to play around with. But you will have to measure this strip to see how it sits with what you're making. So I'll put this, so this is row 28, I think. And I'm going to turn it around and we'll put in row 29. And see how it's a little, that your tension gets a little bit better as your piece gets a little bit longer. So I'll put on this brown one, go through my yellow, put on a yellow, and go through the brown. Okay. So that is 29 rows. And you can see, let's take a look here. The tension's a little wonky. You don't want to pull it too tight or too loose. You just want to be consistent. Because if you aren't consistent, your strip of peyote will start to curve a little bit. And you can see here how I was kind of futzing around with it and playing with it. I pulled probably this bead a little too tight. So let me pull this bead in and it'll write itself when I stitch it together. But again, you want that consistency to be really even. So when I bring my strip of peyote together, we're going to zip it up, right? These little beads. So it's kind of hard to see, but let me get it positioned and then I will show you without my hands in the way, sort of. Bear with me here. It might be a little bit easier if I draw it. Hang on a second. Let me get my trusty yellow pad and show you what I mean. Okay, so if this is our strip of peyote right here, okay. Let me make sure, I'm gonna put that short one off the table so I don't inadvertently use it. And let me get this here. You can see that Let me count this again, because now that I'm looking at it up close, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I think, you guys, I actually lied to you. I believe there are 30 rows, which makes sense now that I work it out in my head. Because can you see that in Peyote Stitch, there is an outer bead like this and an inner bead like that and then an outer bead up here and an inner bead down here okay that's this edge greatly magnified okay then this side right you can see that there's what i call a an outie bead one right here right and this is also an outie bead right here so we actually have to have this reversed so that when the two sides come together this bead from this side fits right in that block and that bead there fits right in that block okay in my haste i counted them incorrectly so let me put on one more row so that's one of these guys and you'll see it when I bring it around. You'll know that you've made this mistake just like I did when I laid it out and I looked at it and it looked like the rows didn't match or that the rows matched, right? Um, someone also mentioned about threading this needle. Of course, I have, um, my needle came un, unthreaded. So I want to needle the thread. So I get the eye of my needle and I push it down on the thread. That's how I do it so quickly. Instead of trying to shove the needle through the thread. There we go. Okay. And so now you can see how I have my beads. We've got a, a down bead or a lower bead here. Can you see that, that end? And like Janice says, you want it to go together like a zipper, right? And then this one here, if I bring this around, it's going to come in and sit together. It's kind of hard to see because it's so small. But what I'm going to do, let me lift this up. And I'm going to put in, I'm going to take my, and you do this almost like other than like feel from other than anything else, right? This thread is going to come out here and go into this bead. But before we do that, kids, we're going to go ahead and add what needs to go in it, which is our crystals. So we're going to put this strip through the crystal, the center of the crystal square. There we go. And we're going to get our second crystal square. And if your crystals have a back and a front, which these don't really do, then you want to make sure that you're putting them on correctly. And then let me turn this around. and grab it. This is where that patience comes in, everybody. Okay. So see how I've how I'm holding everything, right? My crystals are down here. My they're caged inside and I'm just going to stitch this up, right? So here we are, nice and close. I go out this bead. Of course, I'm using brown beads and brown thread, right? And I go through that bead, the Audi bead. Then I come back over to this one. And I go through that bead that's sticking out. I go to this one. That's the bead that's sticking up. So I go through it. And then I go through my last one. Aren't we glad that we only have four beads to go through? Then I tighten it. Where is this tail coming from? There it is. Okay. So I tighten it up. 
And you can see here at the end, it's a little loosey. Okay. So here, I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to go, I'm just going to drop down a row and go through that bead, that bead, that bead, and that bead. And you can see the path kind of with my needle and pull it through. And we're going to, we're going to weave in this tail. So it's giving me a little bit of grief right now. So I'm going to tell it I'm the boss of this thread, right? And I've twisted it a little bit, but I'm going to untwist it. There we go. I'm the boss. And I'm just going to keep stitching back these rows. Oops. Time to needle the thread. So get that eye of the needle, place it on the thread. So we're going to go back down this row. And you can also start going kind of in a diagonal fashion like that if you want as well. And then you can come back, pass back through. When you're stitching off your thread, we don't want to tie any knots in this. We just want to stitch it back through so it kind of locks in. So essentially what I do, this is maybe my fourth pass or my fifth pass. I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to stop in the middle of this row, right here, and come through, tighten, and I'm going to get rid of this thread. Now we've got one more tail to weave in, and that one's here. Okay, so you can kind of turn your little strip around. There it is. So let's needle this thread. And there was a question about um, beads that are uniform in size. So the, th the seed beads that I'm using, these are Miyuki seed beads. Um, and the Miyuki are Japanese. And they're all very uniform in size. So that's why um, if you were doing this with Czech seed beads, while I love the Czech seed beads, sometimes they're not as uniform in size. And that can have its own charm as well. Um, so see how I'm turning the corner, I'm going back, now I went down, now I'm coming back. I'll go back maybe one more row, and I will, I'm going to go through one more. And then I'll stop in the center of that row. I'll go through two, bring it up, and clip it away. And I want to clip, there's a little piece of thread on that one. You could also use your thread burner too. But see what I've got? I mean, I love this, right? And you could also just do it as a bracelet like this. Um, but the Miyuki, um, but before I get off that Miyuki track, um, the Miyuki seed beads are gorgeous. They are uniform, the colors are beautiful, um, and they come in all the sizes, the sixes, the eights, and the 11. So if you haven't tried them here at Bead Shop, we do have a great selection of the Miyuki. So you can shop it uh, by color if you want um, and uh, find everything you need there. So I'm going to attach this to that piece real quick. And I want to just look something up for just a second. So I'm going to have you guys gaze at that beauty right there. Um, and you don't have to use, like I have that big link right there, right, that, um, that I'm using. But you could connect it to anything here, right? Or you could get like really large jump rings and connect it with a couple of those. It just... Um, it just depends on, you know, on the look that you want. I'm going to connect it with this strap of the seed beads. Um, the Swarovski crystals, yeah, as uh, Kim just said here, these 
Swarovski crystals are no longer being made. That's it. Um, many of the styles have been discontinued. There's been this big shift um, at Swarovski to move away from the DIY movement towards the finished jewelry movement, um, which I'm not going to comment on. But um, some of these really wonderful Swarovski crystal shapes that we're so used to seeing um, are going the way of the dodo. We have a good amount of them, but do buy them because when we're out of them, we're out. And I could only find these two colors, but they're really, um, they're really beautiful. So here's that strip of peyote that I made before. And so I'm going to count the rows one more time so I can check and see, um, you know, so you guys have a reference. But this will connect here. And if you'll notice, this ring is a lot skinnier than this crystal square, right? So the, the strip to be visually maybe the same size doesn't have to be this long. Okay, so let me count. Let's just see where we, where we are with it and make adjustments if we need to. So if we look at this strip, it looks like it's right here. I've got a stick up bead here on these sides and then the inside bead on this side so it'll zip right up. So I've got, and I'm going to start counting from this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's an even number of rows. So I know that's right. And I use that little pin and I like touch each bead because my eyes go a little wonky when I look at it. So, um, so that's why I'm doing that. Maybe that'll help you to get it right. Um, so here you can see that my, if I put the ring in there, it's a little tight, right? So I'm going to add two more rows and then we'll measure it again. Okay. So I'm going to go with this long end and we'll add rows 21 and 22. I don't know if you guys have seen online and if you look it up, I mean, it's a, it's a controversial decision, right? Because those of us who have been in the DIY world and have used Swarovski crystals, and there are many seed beaters that have used Swarovski crystals in their work for, you know, decades, really. Um, so it's a real bummer that they're going away. Um, if you look, you can see that they really are focusing on their ready-made boutiques. Um, so give it a Google, take a look and see, and let me know what you think of the new look. It's interesting. I, um, I like things that are fresh and modern. Um, I'd like to see one in person for sure. Um, as I bring it around and I kind of hold it like this, I'm going to put in two more rows. I, I want a little more movement that I feel I'm not getting there. So that was row 22, 21 and 22. So let's put in row 23 and 24. And I bet that will do it. So there and there. So again, the materials that I've been using, I used a foot of chain and I used um, that hammered link, that hammered oval that we have, the hammered hoop that we have, um, and um, the chain is the wrapped link chain. I'm using a foot of it because I want this necklace to sit kind of close to the neck, um, but you can make it as long as you'd like. You decide what works for you. So let's put this back in. We've added two more, so I think it's a total of 24 rows. We'll get this strip of crystal that I've made. And the movement of it is really nice. It's working out like I wanted, which, thank goodness. And I think that this is going to be right. If I hold it to the side a little bit, it's kind of hard to see. But with my experience, um, you can see <clears throat> how it will come together. So let me stitch it. I have started here. I'm going to go through this bead that's sticking up, through this bead that's sticking up through this one and through the last one here and pull it tight. There we go. 
there's a little bit of a tangle, but again, I am the boss of this thread. Let me get my tail in there and pull the tail on the other side as well. And these Swarovskis want to pull this down. So work close to your mat. I was trying to work close to the camera, but the weight of this is pulling it down. So I'm going to put it on the pad. And so now I'm going to get, let me get a little tighter. So you can see it's all pulled tightly. I'm going to come in and I'm going to weave that thread through the row below. And that's going to help me start to tighten everything up. And as you weave your threads in, it's going to really close that gap for you. Get in there. Get in that little bead. There we go. Sorry, I might have been off. It's a little I'm a little close. So let me pull that up. And I'm going to go here. And you can kind of start going in that diagonal row kind of if you want. Now I'm going to go back in a reverse course and go here. That bead hole is getting full. And then here. Okay, and I'm going to go to the center, trying not to split any threads inside those seed beads. <clears throat> Give it a nice tug and a little clip. And then I'll weave the other tail in. So it's important that you leave enough so that you're not doing tiny little stitching, right? So, um, oh, there's our friend Leslie from across the pond. Good evening, Leslie. Thanks for joining us. It's great to have everybody here. One of the things that I love so much about these broadcasts is that we meet here at the bead table from all over the world. So even though we may be apart, we are together in creativity, which is very important to keep us creative and motivated and our minds engaged. See how I'm just going through. I'm going to go back down one more row. Right there. Then I'll come in and I will go, I'll reverse back once and twice, and I'll come up the, the center of that row, okay? And put this through. And I'll clip, okay? So you can see how even though my row was a little shorter, visually it looks about right because that ring is thinner. Okay, so we would bring this around. Let me get rid of all of this business here. And so that's three. We'll do four, five. What are the rest of my crystals? Six and seven. And depending on how long you want this to be, you could add more or less crystal cubes, but that's how it's going to sit. Whoops, there we go, okay, if that works, okay. So that's really it. It's a, it's a pretty easy and simple um, design to make, and, you know, it doesn't take that long to do this small little strip of peyote um, there, right? It's, it's not that taxing time-wise. And I like the, um, the seed bead choices that I made. Um, I, I wasn't real sure um, about my color choices, but I had chosen them, so that's what I went with. But I like the contrast. What I like about it is I like the contrast between a light and a dark bead, because I feel like since it has that contrast, it kind of works with this kind of industrial, like someone earlier called an industrial sheet, kind of this industrial sheet kind of feeling to it. So it has a very um, kind of graphic quality to it. You could use all one color 
too, especially if you're a little more of a seasoned seed beater and peyote stitch. If peyote stitch is like second nature to you, using it, doing it in one color, you won't have any trouble. If you're a beginner with peyote stitch, um, it's a little more difficult, not certainly impossible, but I would probably do your first one as a two color thing. And so I'm just going to string up. I've waxed my thread and we'll start it again. And yeah, this yellow is um, kind of that Pantone color of the year called illuminating. I thought about putting it with the gray that Pantone put it with, um, which I like, um, but it just didn't resonate for me with the copper crystals. I felt like I needed something a little warmer. So I chose this brown rather than the gray. So if I start again, and I'm going to sign off shortly, but I'll just start another one here. We leave that tail and we're going to put on our first two rows are here in pattern, the brown, two yellow, and a brown. The mantra is uh, pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And I have waxed my thread with a little bit of beeswax to kind of tame it. Once you put that first bead on, you kind of want to fiddle with it a little bit until you get that pico shape, right? That little triangular pico shape like that. And then I'll get a little closer to the camera here. Get those out of the way. And then I'm going to pick up my next bead, which is a yellow and go through the brown. And that's it. Now our first three rows are established. So I flip it. So two down, 28 to go, right? At the beginning, I said I made 29 rows. But as you remember, we actually counted. And I counted in really good light. <laughs> and I realized that it is indeed 30 rows, which makes sense because you need that even number of rows so that they fit into each other at the end when you zip them up. So let me see. Oh, and I knew I was going to do this. So I'm glad that I did with this. Can you see how I have a bead out of pattern? I only have one yellow in there. So one thing that you can do, and it's something I've learned from Emily, I usually would just go back through and um, just take my needle off um, and take my thread back through. But one of the things you can do, this is something that Emily taught me, is you can both go back through your piece needle first or eye of the needle first. And you usually, and since this is such a simple weave, I'm not worried about it. So I can just take it out, out there without unthreading my needle. That's a little trick I learned from Emily. I don't do it often, but if it's a straight flat peyote like this, you can't really screw it up and it would be easy to untangle if it tangled a little bit. I could take the needle off and then pull the thread out. But it's a little trick that I wanted to show you guys here. And so um, my mom is asking, is the opening in the peyote in this crystal large enough for the odd count? And Gwenda, I think you'll have to test it. I think it is. Can you see how when I move it over, it looks like there's one bead's worth left. So you could do these if you wanted five, like I did with this earring. You could do it. I think it would be fine, right? And you could also make the earring like this. You could make it like this and then add one of these to the bottom. You could also make it kind of a big strip and have it sit like that, right? Have this strip go through this one, this one, the crystal, and then this one. You'd have to make it kind of long so that the crystal wouldn't bunch up on the top of that piece, but that would work too. Okay, so that's it. Um, Janice is asking, and I love this question, tomorrow is April 1st, um, and it is no joke, we are launching our monthly mix tomorrow. And it's one that Janice and I worked on together. Um, if you follow our Instagram, I will bet you dollars to donuts that Drea is putting a preview of it on our Instagram feed. Um, it's called, I'll tell you what the name is of it. It's called uh, Vintage Diamonds. 
and uh, because we are working our way through all of the birthstones this year and the vintage diamond mix i think you're gonna love i'm kind of wild for it so we'll see um we'll see how it goes i was going to make a wrap with it we've been so busy around here i haven't had time but <clears throat> I'll share maybe on uh, Friday, on Free Tip Friday after it comes out, when I'm here with Emily, I'll pull the palette so you guys can see it um, and then we'll see. But um, yeah, it's good times. So I just wanted to mention, of course, um, a big thank you uh, for all of you all for watching. And don't forget, we are going through, um, I thought I had it here. Yes, I don't. Bear with me here just a second while I grab this then from our newsletter. If you um, grabbed our newsletter today, you saw not only the preview of this project, but you also saw that we do have our um, coupon code for uh, this month. And it is 15% off of purchases of $50 or more. So if you use coupon code LUCKY15 at checkout, it will, um, with a, a $50 purchase, it will take 15% off of your order. And that coupon actually expires tonight, 3-31-21 at midnight Pacific time. Okay, so that's our story. We are sticking to it. Um, we also have, I wanted to mention here, um, you can also, if you don't want to get the, um, uh, if you just want to grab Swarovski crystals, you can use instead, we have an alternate coupon for you to use. If you just want to stock up on those crystals, you can use, and I'm putting this in the, uh, putting it on the screen as we speak. You can use uh, Swarovski uh, 20%. You can use Crystal 20 um, and take 20% off of all your Swarovski crystals. You can't stack your coupons, so you need to make a choice. So if you're going to buy a bunch of everything, you might want to use the 15. But if you really want to stock up on all of this cool vintage Swarovski we have, you might want to do that and use your Crystal 20. And again, it expires tonight, March 31st at midnight. So I will see you guys on Friday with Emily. Thank you all so much for watching. Of course, you can find everything that we've used today right here on our website at beadshop.com. And I will see you Friday with Emily for a fantasy and fringe. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.